In today's tutorial, we'll be creating this rock debris using Element 3D within After Effects. Now, you can obviously add any elements you want to, but I figured adding some rocks to this type of shot would be kind of cool. So, the first thing I want to do here is select my clip, go into my tracker, and select Track Camera, and let it 3D track the scene. Alright, once that is done, let's go ahead and select one of the points here. So, this one for example, and right click Create Null and Camera. I'll create a new solid for our element layer and we'll add element to this. Now I do want to save one frame to act as my environment. So if you're using effects console, which you should, just go ahead and save an image here or just go into composition, save frame as and export an image. Now let's go into element and here under starter pack, we've actually got some 3D pre-made rocks here we can use. Or if you want to use something different, you can always go to Sketchfab or something. And there's a bunch of free options here you can use. So just keep that in mind. I'll be using just the default one here for the sake of this tutorial. And I'll go into my environment here and I'll select the image that we've saved before. So once we import it here, it's basically going to reflect our environment and it's going to help us sell the shot. Let's go ahead and click OK and we can see it's tracked pretty well. Let's identify the position of our null so we can position it accordingly. So I'll go into group one here and let's just copy the Z position from the null object onto our group one. Let's go ahead and change the replicator shape to 3D grid and set the Z to maybe five, the Y to four and the X to eight. So if we scale the shape here, you can see we just created a 3D grid with replications of the model that we're using. And let's go ahead and adjust the X scale here so we can spread these out. I'll also go into my particle look here, particle rotation, and we can boost the random rotation and also adjust the size random here so we can have different kind of shapes. And I can actually decrease the grid X here to six so I don't want too many of these. And let me also adjust the rotation here. Now to spread this out, we can go into replicator effects and under scatter, we're just going to randomly scatter them here. And you can also edit the XYZ here individually. All right, once you spread the objects out, you can see it's tracked pretty well and it's already looking pretty promising. Now let's go ahead and just keyframe a few things. So I'll select the position X and Y, scale shape and the random rotation. Let's hit U to bring these up and I'll drag them to the end of our comp here. And on our first frame, I'm just going to drag them below our shot and maybe decrease the scale here and give it some random rotation to go through. Again, we can have it start off frame like so. Now let's start matching this better to our shot. So let's go back into element and I'll create a new plane here, drag this down and make it under group number two. And we can just scale it up like so. I will copy the Y position from our null here and go into group two and set it to the Y position on group two. So now I've got the plane sort of placed around the ground area and I'm just going to go ahead and increase the size of it. Maybe drag it just a bit lower here. Now we can start adding some shadows to our shot. So let's create a new light and I'll keep it at parallel and just make sure it casts shadows. Hit OK and let's go into element here and under render settings, enable shadows and upscale this shadow size. And now we can actually see some of the shadows. So let's just start repositioning the light accordingly to our frame. So I'll move some of the settings here. And we can go back into element. And now we'll just go into the preset materials here and select matte shadow and drop it onto our mat. And now we can actually see them on our shot. Let's just go ahead and adjust this. So I'll up the blur radius here and I'll decrease the shadow darkness here to maybe 25. So it's pretty subtle. Now let's go ahead and make more adjustments to blend this into our shot. So I'll go into my light here and I'll select one of the presets. I believe dark works pretty well for the shot. And I'll just create a small adjustment here. So the light is coming from this direction. And under physical environment, we can also adjust some of the settings here of the exposure and the gamma. Again, just create some adjustments to match your shot. And one final adjustment is adding a curve effect. So we can actually match the colors. So basically creating your adjustments until it fits your shot, adding a fast blur and something very subtle like 0.05, just so it's blending in with our shot a bit more. And lastly, let's add depth of field. So it matches this current shot here. So we can do this by going into depth of field and we'll set it to focus illustrator. 
hit AA on our camera and turn it on. And basically whatever is red is going to be in focus and the rest is going to be blurred out. So this should be good enough. Let's just up the aperture here to 150 and the blur to 250. And now if we go back into element here and set it to pixel blur, and it does tend to get pretty heavy working with depth of field. So make sure you're done working on your shot first and then create the depth of field adjustment. And another nice touch of detail here you can add is go back into element. And on our group layer one, I can go back into my rocks preset here and let's just select this one for example. We'll move it to the left here and scale this down and I'll create a duplicate and move it to the right and hit OK. And this will automatically just add these smaller, nicer details here in our shot. Let me just turn the depth of field off so we can see. So again, these small details here. And on my original shot here, I've also added some big rocks in the background and I did this on a separate element layer. So we basically got only the big rocks here and I rotoscope the area here just so it's sort of behind it. Just another nice touch, you know, to the shot. But yeah, this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.